Due to problems that have developed in the past, this is something that is handled exclusively by the Corning staff. Our constant market analysis, our access to accurate and pertinent information, and our professional rapport with the packing industry give us a decided advantage in dealing with these professional counterparts. After a complete credit check and market study have been approved, negotiations for a working agreement with the packers or packers in the area are opened up. When a working agreement is accepted, the foundation is laid. The next step is to establish a floor to build on. A smooth floor will enable us to move easily from one part of the structure to the other. A rough floor will result in stubbed toes, broken heels, and a lot of accidents. The floor to this structure that we're talking about is the communication between the home office and the local leadership. Local market conditions change erratically. And in order to properly market in any area, we must be informed as to local prices and problems. This feedback must come from the country. Efficient and competent transportation must be governed and selected by the membership that it will serve. All the cattle we sell must be transported to market. There's an interesting point to be made here. The Teamsters Union is one of the largest and most powerful in this country. They are large, powerful, and wealthy solely through collective bargaining. Transportation is always a bearing factor on any structure. It must be readily accessible and adequate to suit your needs. In addition to transportation, we'll need a place to collect these cattle that we're going to deliver in this new market area. A competitively priced working agreement has been accepted. Local leadership has been contacted. The foundation, or a solid base, has been completed. Up to this stage, there have been relatively few people involved, and all of those involved have been either professionals or experts in at least one phase of the dealings or another. All the dirty work is done, but the hard work has just begun. Now we must block our production so that collective bargaining is more than an idea, so that it is a reality. This phase will encompass every member of the organization. This phase will take the most time, the most work, and the greatest number of people. A complete and accurate inventory is taken to determine the quality and the quantity of the cattle we intend to deliver to the packers in this new area. Every member is contacted for participation. Transportation is coordinated to ensure efficient delivery of marketable cattle. Each person is informed of predetermined prices. The blocking of production is the only sure way to cost of production plus a reasonable profit in today's market. The Minuteman system of communication is the only sure way to block production. Through the Minuteman system, we know where every animal is, who owns that animal, and the approximate shipping date of that animal. Every successful attempt to block production in the National Farmers Organization has been accompanied by a working Minuteman system. Every failure has been accompanied by a weak or inactive system. To be a member of the National Farmers Organization is to be a member of the Minuteman system, without exception. The, mark, the Minuteman system is more than a marketing tool. It's an information source. And everyone knows that to be successful, you have to be informed. 
Now we're like a fine-tuned race car. We're setting at the starting line. We're revving up our engines. We're ready to go. We're ready to pass all the competition and to finish in first place. We have everything we need to succeed. Everything except one, a working system. We've got a system. But is it going to work or is it going to fail? Throughout the history, we have by this point a clear picture of our efforts. If we follow the guidelines, we'll have a Minuteman system that can turn the flow of cattle on and off like a light switch. We have a complete and accurate inventory. We have informed producers. We have key people to police our system of collection and dispatch. We have a professionally negotiated working agreement. And hopefully, we have a block of production. Throughout the history of the National Farmers Organization, at various times, we have had all of the pieces of this structure, different combinations of all of the pieces of this structure. Yet, when it came to maintaining our production blocks, we failed. Our Minuteman systems have deteriorated. Our collection and dispatch have fallen apart. It won't return us anything to dwell on our past failures. It will, however, benefit us greatly to analyze these errors and adjust our program to guard new and complete marketing strategies. A market study of the type I've just discussed was started earlier this year, about spring, by the Home Office staff in Corning. Our target area was the northeastern United States, specifically New York, Vermont, and Maine. Our interest there was not coincidental. We were at that time making tremendous headway with our cold cow blocks in the state of Wisconsin and Minnesota. The Northeast is saturated with dairy farms. It was these dairy cold cows, the bread and butter of the cattle industry, that attracted our attention. We learned from that study in short order that our membership in the Northeast was both dedicated and resourceful but we also learned that it was dwindling. We learned from that study that Party Pack in U Utica, New York, with whom we have a unique and adequate working agreement, was the largest of its kind in that marketing area. We learned that the volume capacity of the producers in those three states that are members of the National Farmers Organization was sufficient enough to supply a major portion of that packer's kill. And we found that the attitude of the packing industry in the Northeast toward the National Farmers Organization's program for marketing cattle had, like the National Farmers Organization itself, shifted and drifted into a new era of professional marketing. Volume was then and still is the primary concern of every packer in the Northeast. With the help of Kenton Bailey of Maine, Harold Adams of Vermont, Duke Engelbrecht of New York, and some others, we set out to block production in the Northeast for our national coal cow movement. The members blocked 450 coal dairy cows for that movement. The market slipped, and the date for delivery was postponed. Our block began to crumble. Another date was set, and deliveries scheduled over a three-day period. The packers in New York told me at that time that delivery according to my three-day schedule was impossible in the state of New York. Three days later, I was inclined to believe them because we were delivering less than 10% of our cattle according to our daily schedule into the packer. But that experience is going to prove to be the most positive thing that has happened in the cattle department or division 
in a long, long time. It's positive because it generated activity among our membership. It's positive because of a renewed awareness of both the problems and the potential of an area we thought to have been lost to apathy. It's going to be positive because it showed the Packers in the Northeast that this so-called new NFO we've been talking about was here. And it was serious. And it was potentially disastrous to the present procurement programs used by those Packers. The results of that cold cow block were one, an improved working agreement. Two, the rejuvenation of the Minuteman system. Three, increased demand for national farmer organization cattle, including one packer who requested from me 100% supply of national farmer organization cattle. Fourth and most important, we had a revival of the leadership and the staff in that area to succeed. The North, Northeast is unique in that the only two major commodities there are dairy products and beef. Our success there is imminent, and it's restricted only by participation of the members. In the cattle department, we've tried to govern our expansion in order to develop each area completely before moving into a new area. For the last several minutes, I've talked only about the tangent factors involved in developing a new area. I've done that deliberately because the next thing I'm about to touch on is the most crucial of all. I'm going to talk about people. People consume our products. People price our products. People come in a variety of sizes and shapes. No two are alike. The dairy producer in the Northeast, his needs have nothing in common with the wheat farmer in Kansas. Those two men are as different and their needs are as different as the men themselves. Our entire system of marketing is dependent on people. Our effectiveness in blocking our production is dependent on people. My job in the cattle division is to find solutions to problems. The only problems that we can't solve in the cattle division are those that deal with people. We will never, never accomplish our goal. If we allow personality conflicts to govern the flow of cattle, we must all work together all the time, everywhere we are. It's essential that we do that. The best marketing system in the world is going to be worthless to us unless we have people working together all the time, everywhere, to accomplish one single goal, blocking that production. In the past year, I've seen the most incredible change in personalities I've seen in my life. I'm supposed to be representative of what can be done in a personality change because I'm not from an agricultural background and I'm in the agricultural business. I've seen the people in the NFO spend hours and hours on end trying to find ways to improve the programs. I've seen people who hated each other's guts forget about their differences and forget about the past and work together to better their position in the marketplace. I've seen a virtual melting pot of personalities 
molded into one voice. Now, if an Okie and an Arkie and a cowboy and a truck driver and a marginal lunatic like the one we've got back home can work together, anybody in the world can. Key people, key people with the knowledge and expertise to develop working systems and solve problems are essential to the cattle program and to every other thing that you do. Statistics and experience show us that we're now on the threshold of accomplishing our goal of cost of production plus a reasonable profit. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ron. That's some more of the example I've been trying to express here today of the question that is becoming more and more in my mind. I wonder how many more are in this audience that have that expressed talent that you just heard here express himself to you. I'm sure you learned from what he told you. I'm sure you had to be impressed with the simple fact that this man came with your organization one year or less ago. Absolutely no conception of what this organization was or stood for and was able to stand at a national convention and express himself in the manner that he did. I wonder how many more of you are restricting me, your friends and neighbors, and more importantly, yourselves, by not coming forward with that kind of a talent. We had to set up this program precisely as Ron Shaw has expressed himself to you. We had to find an area that was primarily local, an area that had good potential, as he expressed, an area that had the packing power and freight proximity to the source of supply, and a state that became more prominent at each survey was the state of Wisconsin. So we decided that would be our pilot project. Now in Wisconsin, you met Erwin Stry. We had Vic Balmer up there, numerous other good men. But their time was so restricted. Erwin runs three collection points by himself. Vic Balmer farms and runs a big collection point in Rock County. We had to find a young man that had vitality, but also had at least a working background of what your and my objectives were in collective bargaining. Last winter, we were having a series of young farmer meetings in Corning, Iowa. These young men came from all states. They came in large numbers. It gave us a chance as department heads to kind of look over the crop so to speak. And a fellow that kept coming, and he kept coming to the surface, he kept asking questions, he had a certain infantile curiosity, if that's the correct term, about marketing cattle. He had an eagerness to learn about marketing cattle that really impressed me. I found out that in fact he was a farmer, a dairyman, had a truck for sure, hauled cattle for the National Farmers Organization, and through some contact, I got to him, expressed my need, and he accepted the challenge as a salaried employee and expressed himself to me that he was interested enough to take on 
the state supervisory ship of the state of Wisconsin. This fellow's name is Joe Soam. He's from Western, or uh, he's from Potter, Wisconsin. That's up in the eastern area. His responsibility is to block cows. And when we're all done here today, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a little bit of what he's done most recently. But for now, I would like for you to welcome Joe Soam to give you an indication of what this program that Bobby Cox laid out for you. What this program, as it now is currently in application, is doing for you physically. It's not an if-come thing, ladies and gentlemen. It's in your hands today. It's not a thing that will come if. It's a thing that is currently in production. And while we up here are at this convention... That program is on automatic and is in running condition and is operating and we're blocking cattle this very minute to packers in this country. So with that, Joe, I would like to have you say some words. I'd like for you to welcome Joe Song from Wisconsin. Thank you, Walt. Ladies and gentlemen, for the past three years, I've been sitting where you're sitting today, listening to speakers tell us what we should be doing to make the National Farmers Organization a success. Well, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you what we should be doing, but in fact, I am going to tell you a success story of what we are doing in the state of Wisconsin with our Cull Cow program. I've been employed by the National Farmers Organization Slaughter Cattle Division since January of this year. And for the first three and a half months, we ran our Cull Cow program as we had done in the past. I'm not going to dwell on the past because I don't think the past is important. But for those first three and a half months, we ran our cow cow program in a helter skelter manner. By that I mean we would book our cattle with the packing companies, and if we were within 75 to 100 head of what we booked for a week, we would consider ourselves lucky. But more importantly, for those first three and a half months, I was out in the country getting people who would work with me as cattle coordinators. These people had to be positive. They had to be energetic. They had to be able to communicate with the members and non-members alike. They had to be able to coordinate cattle with me. Now, on the 15th of April, I got a call from the home office telling me to put a cow block or a cow sell-off together in the state of Wisconsin. I did this with the help of my new cattle coordinators, collection point reps, county meat committees, the dairy staff from the state of Wisconsin, and our national directors. These people help me contact every member in the state of Wisconsin. For that sell-off, we put together 2,200 cows. Now in May, we sold these cows to a local packer in Green Bay. We sold them for $83.50, flat in the beef. This packer bought these cows with a little reluctance because he had no faith in the National Farmers Organization. But through a professional job of selling by our people in the home office, he bought these cows. On the week of the 15th of May, we delivered these cows to this packer 
all 2,200 just as we had scheduled. Over Memorial Day weekend, Walter Hackney, director of slaughter cattle, received a call from this buyer, from this packing company, and this buyer told him he couldn't believe the accuracy in which we delivered that block of cows. This is a quite a tribute to the National Farmers Organization and its membership. Now in June, another sell-off was put together. This time, 1,250 cows were blocked. The only difference is this time we had every major cow killer in the Midwest trying to buy these cows. We sold them and delivered them, 1,250, just as we had scheduled. In July, a sell-off was put together, 950 cows. And I think at this time it was a turning point for our cow cow program in the state of Wisconsin. We put together these 950 cows, and I think at this point the packing companies were anticipating this sell-off. The yellow sheet dropped $10 per hundredweight across the board. And the reason why I say this was the turning point is because I received a call from the home office telling me to put a hold on this cow sell-off. I contacted my cattle coordinators and my collection point reps. They in turn called every member who had cattle booked for that sell-off. We held these 950 cows. After our August 3rd meeting in Des Moines, the yellow sheet responded. We delivered all of our 950 cows as we had booked. Now, in September, it was decided we would go twice a month. And from this point on, we call them cow blocks. On the 15th of September, Steve Bohr, Assistant Director of Slaughter Cattle, sold a block of 450 cows to Packerland Packing Company in Green Bay. And the corporate buyer told Steve Bohr this, and I quote, I can't believe how you people organized deli the delivery on that large a number of cows with that many owners. A couple of years ago, I wouldn't even have bought a block of cows, a block of 200 cows or more, because I couldn't depend on them having been delivered. The way the National Farmers Organization conducts its business now is the difference between night and day. As you can see, we have now gained the confidence of the packing companies. After, the, after September, it was decided we would go once a week with our cow blocks. Since that time, we have been averaging a block of cows a week of five, five to 600 head of cows. Now the reason why we went once a month, then twice a month, and now to once a week, is because we had to condition our membership into blocking their production, as they should have been doing since the National Farmers Organization was organized. What has this program, this Cull Cow program, meant to the National Farmers Organization and its membership. It has meant a 30% increase in production in our cull cows this year compared to last. Even though, according to state statistics, our cull cow kill in the state of Wisconsin is down 
So in all actuality, we have increased our production by 47%. It has meant an increase in membership. I've had my own non-member neighbors call me and ask what they had to do to get involved in the National Farmers Organization Call Cow Program. I have, a, I have had collection points from Michigan and Minnesota call me and ask what they had to do to get involved in Wisconsin's call cow blocks. I simply tell them to be professional. Give us an accurate description of your cattle and accurate numbers and accurate delivery dates. It has meant more net dollars in the farmer's pocket. And right now, I'm going to show you what I mean. In the column in the left, is what farmers received for their cattle by going through sale barns and local terminals outside of the National Farmers Organization. This is on all grades of cows. I got these figures from the Wisconsin Statistical Reporting Service in Madison, Wisconsin. Now the column on the right is what our National Farmers Organization membership has received for their production by going through our Cull Cow program. As you can see, all through the months, we have been ahead. But more importantly, look where we have come from at $29.40 per hundredweight in January to $42.88 per hundredweight in November. Ladies and gentlemen, this is success. <laughs> right now, I'm going to tell you how we conduct one week's business in our call call program in the state of Wisconsin. On Thursday, after the cattle have been, or the cows have been delivered, for that week, I call my cattle coordinators and collection point reps, telling them of our next week's cow block, telling them to contact every member in their respective areas. They have from Thursday through Monday at noon to contact their membership and get the total number of cattle in their area back to me. At noon on Monday, I call the home office, giving them the total number of cows we have for the state of Wisconsin. They sell our cows by 4 p.m. on Monday afternoon for us. They tell me where to deliver the cows and at what price we're going to sell them for. I then call the packing companies or the packing company where we have sold them, give him the delivery schedule on these cows, when we're going to have them there. After this has been completed, I call my cattle coordinators and my collection point reps, telling them where to deliver the cows and at what price we have them sold. They then have from Tuesday through Thursday to deliver these cows. Now what does Walter Hackney expect from me as slaughter cattle supervisor for the state of Wisconsin? He expects me to conduct myself as a professional or as a businessman. He expects me to accurately describe our blocks of cattle. By that I mean the total number of cows, the types of cows. He expects me to accurately describe our average weights, live and dressed, our actual grades on our last week's block of cows. This enables him 
to more effectively bargain for our next week's block of collars. Right now I'm going to give you an example of what effective blocking and bargaining of cows has done for us. The week before last, Steve Bohr called me and told me to put together a block of a thousand cows. And at this time, I didn't think it could be done. We didn't put together a thousand cows, but in fact, we put together 1,200 cows. And with that block of cows, we made history in the National Farmers Organization. We sold this block of cows for 90 cents flat in the beef. Ladies and gentlemen, this is success. In closing, I'm going to tell you the two key factors that have made us successful in the state of Wisconsin with our Cull Cow program. They are communication and coordination. Just remember, communication and coordination. And I think if every state in the union took these two key words back to their states and counties and put them to work, they too can come back to our next year's national convention and tell the same success story. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joe. It seems like I have to continue to repeat myself because Joe did not come from industry, but Joe could go to industry. Joe could go to those packers with that description that he gives me each week and buy as accurately and as astutely for that packer as any man that that packer has, and he's come to this position in probably 10 months. He was a member. He had a desire. He wanted to do it. He asked to do it, and we give him the opportunity. I hope you noticed in Joe's presentation, the one word that we have omitted now from where I was a year ago today. It's a we organization now. Walt Hackney didn't sell and Steve Bohr didn't block. We said that we would do it, we did it, and we made history last week for this organization. I think that's highly commendable, and I compliment the organization for it. But you know the thing that probably bothers me more than any one thing? It's foolish that we got to brag about last week making history. You've had the potential for 20 years. You'll have the potential for the next 20 years. I hope the next 20 years will have a success story to it comparable to what Joe's expressed he has experienced in that state of Wisconsin. There's other states to thank. There's other states to brag on. I picked Wisconsin simply because it happened to be the initial pilot pro program that we put out. It's worked. It's working elsewhere. I had to have more help, though, than, than Joe Song. I had to have more help than Ron Shaw. I needed an individual in our office that was energetic, that was young and flexible-minded enough to learn, hopefully take some direction from me, and I couldn't find one that I felt like would fill those requirements. But I had a state supervisor over in the state of Nebraska running around single, chasing girls and raising cane all night. And I needed to bring him in where I could hold him down a little bit. So I invited Steve Bohr to come over to Corning, Iowa. 
He walked in there looking like John Bushog just crawled off a bronc somewhere in Oklahoma City. But he has turned himself into as qualified bargainer of livestock for this organization as you will need to have. He has commanded and gotten the respect from those individuals we do business with on a daily basis. They don't call for Walt Hackney anymore. They call for Steve because they know that what he expresses has got my endorsement because I have total, full confidence in what he does as a bargainer for your product. I want you to welcome Steve. He works hard. He's totally sincere and committed to your cause. I think you deserve him. I think he deserves your support. I'd like you to welcome Steve Bohr, the Assistant Director. Ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Cox from Montana gave you a very basic description of the initial concept of collective bargaining. Ron Shaw from the Home Office described to you in detail the National Farmers Organization Collection, Dispatch, and Delivery System. You also heard Joe Salm give you the first-hand facts on what these programs, along with the marketing system you now have available to you, has accomplished. Many of you probably recognize these as being the same system you've had available to you for quite a number of years. Yes, it is the same. And I might add the very best complete saturation program that exists. Over the past year, we've had to develop a rapport with the packing industry that would allow us to move them cattle other than on the grade and yield programs. We have devoted most of the past year to overcoming this before we could put a complete marketing system into effect. This was more of a problem than what many of you may realize. The reputation this organization had for marketing cattle was totally unacceptable. We in the Home Office had to use our own reputations and in fact hang our own carcasses on the line to get this system started. Well, that paid off, and now the industry has confidence in this organization for supplying them the kind and quality of cattle needed for their requirements. Another serious problem we have overcome in the past year is to gain confidence of the farmers and ranchers. Without participation and cooperation from cattle feeders and cow-calf people, there isn't a system available in the country that will ever achieve you your cost of production plus a profit. We are doing our best to cooperate with you. You asked us for a more flexible marketing system. Because of these requests, we have set up for you the most lucrative marketing system available to the farmers and ranchers today. This graph shows you that at this time, one year ago, 96% of the cattle being marketed through the National Farmers Organization system were sold on the grade and yield programs. At the present time, 63% of the cattle marketed are on the grade and yield, and the remaining 37% are either sold flat in the beef or on a live basis. What this means is that we had to prove to the packing industry 
that we had people who were professionally qualified to the point that we could sell them cattle using our own descriptions. We have also, through our much better rapport with the packing industry, over the past year, been able to greatly improve those grading yield formulas. This shows you that in January of this year, we have